So this is question number four from test one, section three from math. Um, the first thing I want you to recognize about this question is that it is a very long question, right? So anytime you have a question that is beyond the third line or so, we're going to consider this to be a translate word problem question, which I'll identify as TWP. And all that really means is that I want you to read each sentence um, at a time. Don't move on unless you understood what you read in the previous sentence. And then definitely write down any numbers that are provided. So any quantitative information provided in the sentence that you've read, along with rewriting any formula or equation that the question provides. Okay, so we're, let's get started with this question. So it says Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week, she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. Okay, all that makes sense so far. Then it says the number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation P equals 108 minus 23D. So here's my very first thing to write down. I'm simply rewriting the equation P equals 108 minus 23D. And we're told that in this case the P represents the number of phones she has left to fix. So I'm just going to underline phone she has left to fix and kind of give an arrow to the P here. Um, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days. So D number of days, I'll just put an arrow here and say days that she has worked that week. What is the meaning of the value 108? So what is this doing here in the equation? So first and foremost, I want you to recognize that this equation is in slope intercept form. Now that might not have stood out to you when you look at it, but the reason why I bring this up is because this shows up quite often on the SAT where an equation is provided, but really you're asked to think about it from a slope-intercept form perspective. So just to remind you, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And really what you have to understand from this is that whatever is in front of the x is your slope or your rate of change. And whatever numbers by itself is like your y-intercept or your starting point. So if I were to rewrite the equation given in slope-intercept form, I would have p equals negative 23d plus 108, meaning that when there are no days worked, right, when d is equal to zero, that there are 108 phones to work on, and that each um, day she loses or she works on 23 of them. That's how you would, and that's how you would interpret this, where my m or rate of change is negative 23, so 23 phones per day, we know the D represents days, and 108 is my Y-intercept, which really just means what's the P-value when D is zero, right? So at zero days worked, she has 108 phones remaining. So let's, fee let's see which answer choice best fits this description. So choice A says, Kathy will complete the repairs within 108 days. Well, we know that that can't be correct because 108 has nothing to do with the number of days, okay? Choice B, Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. Now, that makes more sense, right? Because if we're starting the week, that means there hasn't been any days worked, which means D would equal zero, and when D is equal to zero, P, the number of phones she has left to fix, is equal to 108. So that would make sense to go along with at the beginning of the week or at the start of each week, she has 108 phones to fix, and therefore choice B is the correct answer. Choice C brings in 108 per hour. There's no mentioning of hours in this question. Um, and again, choice D, really the, the trick here is that it says rate of 108 per day. That's really more so, if you see the, the term rate, which we see in choice C and D, those would more so be the right answer if the question was asking about the slope, because remember, the slope is rate of change.